Okay, the purpose of this video is to uh, illustrate how to take a dynamical system and model it uh, so that you can build a simulation in Simulink. Uh, the purpose also, well, in the process of doing this, we'll talk about modeling, we'll talk about uh, how to um, perhaps simplify models, and so on. So, the uh, system that we have, beautifully rendered, is uh, a DC motor and a load. So for those of you who uh, are not as artistically challenged as me, this is the motor, this is a battery, and this is a load. Okay, and uh, the idea is that when you first connect the battery to the motor, uh, the load starts to spin up, and we'd like to see the dynamics of how that happens and what uh, goes on there. So this is a somewhat interesting system in the sense that it has both electrical and mechanical components, and so to do the modeling, we're going to end up with uh, uh, several, a uh, couple differential equations. Um, in the process of doing this, we'll also identify state variables. Uh, state variables are important because uh, they uh, determine what your Simulink uh, simulation is going to look like. State variables are also important because they can tell you uh, what things in your system you need to keep track of in order to uh, predict its uh, future performance uh, from its past. So. Uh, without uh, going into, or, or without further ado, uh, let's actually try to build a model of the system that we can use uh, for our Simulink. So the DC motor, this guy, and the battery, and the wires that connect the battery to the motor form a circuit. And so the first thing we're going to do is uh, develop an electrical model of the circuit. So the battery, we'll start with the easy one. We're going to model as a voltage source. And we'll call this V sub S, which stands for a voltage source. And the idea is that uh, uh, typically this is going to be a source that is zero up until some time, and then it goes up to a voltage. Um, again, this models the idea that uh, maybe you're flipping a switch and the motor turns on. So the electrical model of the motor we're going to use is fairly simple. It consists of three components. And I'll draw the electrical model and then try to explain what these components are. Okay, so this is a resistor R. This is an inductor L. And this is a voltage source, which we'll call V sub B. R is representing the resistance of the coils inside the motor. So you might think in here of, uh, depending on the structure of the motor, there's these electrical coils. Um, some of them are fixed. Some of them are rotating. But again, depending on the structure of the motor, that this is a gross oversimplification, probably. And R is their resistance. Coils are long, long lengths of wire. Wire has some resistance. The fact that the wire is coiled means that it also has some inductance. And so um, we're going to model the inductance of the motor with L. V sub B is a, whoops, a voltage that is called the... Uh, uh, back EMF. This is back EMF. Uh, EMF stands for electromotive force. And the idea is that as I spin up the, the load, so it starts to rotate in this direction, I have the coils on the rotor rotating in a magnetic field. And that turns out to actually be a generator. And the idea is as the velocity, the angular velocity of this load increases, 
then the voltage generated by the back EMF also increases. And uh, so this um, back EMF actually is the reason that DC motors have a top speed. So to put this into a circuit, we add the wires. And there you have it. We have our, our um, electrical circuit that describes the DC motor. We'll tidy it up just a bit because it's bothering me. Okay, so um, that's uh, a useful thing. Okay, so let's also then look at um, the mechanical part of the load. We're going to call the rotational, the angular velocity of the load omega. And uh, again, this is basically the angular rate at which the load is spinning. And uh, the uh, relationship that uh, gives us the, infra or gives us the uh, um <coughs> a relationship between the angular velocity and the torque produced by the motor is uh, this one. The torque is equal to the moment of inertia of the load times the rate at which the angular velocity is changing, or the angular acceleration. And this is essentially the uh, rotational version of F equals ma. So torque, in this case, is analogous to force. M is analogous to the uh, inertial, or the uh, moment of inertia. And omega dot is the uh, angular acceleration. That's analogous to A. So that will basically give us the relationship between the load as it rotates and the torque. Okay, so we need one more thing. Well, so now the question is how do we determine what the torque is? And to do that, we actually need to do the analysis of the circuit um, because th by analyzing the circuit, we can figure out what the torque is going to be. So we're going to start by writing the current that flows around this loop. This is a single loop circuit, and so the current that flows through R is the same as the current that flows through L, is the same as the current that flows through the back EMF source, as well as the uh, battery. So we're going to describe this current, we're going to label it. We'll use a little brighter color so you can see just how beautiful this is. We're going to label this current I, and we're going to solve for this current in just a minute. But the relationship that is useful to us is it turns out that the torque generated by a DC motor is equal to some constant, which we'll call k sub t. We're actually going to end up with a couple constants here. But the torque is k sub t times the current going through the motor. Okay. So because this current's a function of time, it turns out this torque will also be a function of time. And that means then that uh, this equation, the equation that relates torque to the uh, angular acceleration, uh, those will also change as a function of time. So really, the only thing we need left in order, the only thing that we don't know then is the relationship between this current, between I sub t, and the voltage V sub s. Um, so let's do the circuit analysis. We know that um, V sub S is equal to R I of T. So R I of T, that's the voltage across the resistor, plus the voltage across the inductor. You'll remember, of course, that the voltage across an inductor is L di dt. So this is going to be L di dt plus this back EMF, V sub b. Okay, so uh, we're getting close. The last thing we need to do before we start trying to put this all together 
is uh, figure out what V sub B is. Well, it turns out that V sub B is equal to a constant, which we'll call K sub B, times the angular velocity of the load. Okay, so um, this K sub B, this constant here, the K sub T, these, well, and also R and L, these are parameters that depend on the, on the particular motor that you select. And so for different DC motors, um, these, uh, these uh, values will be different. Um, and in a minute, uh, when we go to actually implement some, this guy in Simulink, we'll uh, um, pick some numbers there that correspond to a particular motor that I found on the web. Okay, so it turns out, it may not be clear, but it turns out that we actually have all the information we need to um, solve uh, for the motor behavior. Uh, let's, uh, V sub S is the source. This is something that we control. We can turn on the source or turn it off. Um, so this is basically going to be the input to the system. In the past, in previous videos, I've called the input of the system x of t. So in some sense, basically just want to point out that this, that v sub s is the input. The output of the system is the angular velocity. And so in the past, we've called this y sub t. Okay, so the idea is that we're going to find a relationship between V sub S, the input, and omega, the output. And we have a couple, well, a couple of coupled differential equations. So um, I think this video actually has gone about long enough. So in the next video, we'll uh, describe how to we'll actually separate out these coupled differential equations and then um, we'll show how you model this in Simulink. So stay tuned for the next video.